So, Thursday the 5th of December 2019, earlier this week, Tuesday and Wednesday, I attended the International Security Expo 2019. Um, just Google the name, fill the application form in, a few judicious uh, economic with the actualities, uh, um, you're in, you turn up. So, uh, go in through security, get yourself a little tag, get yourself a pamphlet. In this pamphlet, there's a map of all the stands, a lot of them. There are conferences you can attend biographies of speakers so I turn up I go into the main hall have a quick flick through the book and I decide to attend a, a panel on challenges of protecting different crowded places now just walk in you can scan the barcode on your badge sit down listen to what they've got to say and then uh, at the end of the uh, panel, there's a question and answer session. Now listen to the quality of people that you can then ask questions. Beverly Griffith, resident, resistance capability lead, emergency planning, cabinet office. Barry Palmer, head of security, Tate Gallery. Simon Hankins, Head of Security, Houses of Parliament. Darren Hannigan, Managing Director, Borough Market. Philip Jones, Head of Security, West Mill, Westfield Shopping Centre. All these people are ex-army, ex-police, ex-services of some description. The very highly motivated, highly paid, highly qualified people and you can question them or even give them ideas now both <laughs> after it sounds like I got a question in and I said I asked them why they don't start a new fashion what a fashion of carrying an umbrella now there isn't this is what I said there isn't many narwhal tusks or fire extinguishers generally available on the street but if everybody's got an umbrella you can keep a knife attacker at bay. The British public have proved they're willing to defend themselves against this scum. But this run, hide and tell policy is also being uh, reviewed. Run, hide and fight. Because it still took five minutes for the police to turn up at London Bridge without that narwhal tusk without that fire extinguisher, without three really extremely brave people, how many would have died? Another 10, 15, striking at their necks? So, further to this uh, conference, later on in the day, I... I went round looking at a few other things. I mean, if you if you are on the doors or in security of any description, so it's a tremendous place. High tech uh, drones and uh, surveillance cameras, um, security locks, everything to do with stab vests, slash vests, tremendous things to just wander around and have a look at what the modern. Um, security industry is it's, a, it's not a bad day out if, if that's the way that you're thinking and then later on in the day I uh, went to a safety and security engagement with faith communities uh, by a gentleman called Chris Phillips who let's have a look uh, experience is managing director of IPPSO experience in policing CT security advising corporate government and private clients de developed and delivered crowd places protective security 
a regular commentator for the international press, television and radio on terrorism policing. The risk, security and espionage. I got to question that man. How do we protect our churches? Oh, you'd think this through. I was in there on my own. And I cocked up. I declared to that gentleman that I was English Defence League. And within a couple of hours, I'd been found and thrown out. I got back in the next day. And I then went to a, an invite-only event, tried to sneak in. <laughs> oh, wrong, boom, out again. But I encourage you all, whoever you are, it's a trip, you know, I, I know people all over the country, and the, particularly in London, you can go to this event. You just have to be a locksmith. Just take a name of a company invent that you're going to be spending 20 million pounds this year on security vaguely you go, go in don't mention who you are and question these people now if there'd been three four five in each room questioning what the hell are these idiots doing allowing terrorists on a tag back into london to murder the people that had been mentoring them Pathological altruism is killing us. It's a cracking event, lads. Really exciting. Don't leaflet. Don't declare who you are. Ask these people questions. Oh, there was something else as well on that day uh, that I went to. And it was... Uh, 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 senior officer of the CPNI and he was met police senior officer that's why I was asking him about why he let, let them people in an ongoing investigation by a senior police officer and he was oh 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 I'm not expecting these questions if these questions are coming from all over the room and not just one long-haired idiot at the front wear a jacket and tie as well guys this is the way we are going to be able to ask our elite what the fuck they are doing if Boris Johnson can't talk about Islam and that's something else I said I said that they are the most uh, what was Boris's quote um, most sectarian religion there is and they will uh, 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 uh. but if Boris can't talk about it and I tell you something two or three of them senior people know about Islam and they don't talk about it International Security Expo go people go I think I might be on a lifetime ban <laughs> go people go Ask them questions. They are all here. Let's just randomly flick through, um, uh, pick a name out for you. Oh, this is me. Right, Barry Millet, Chairman CSSC West Midlands, Head of Security for the Wesleyan and also Midlands cross-sector safety and security communications chairman uh, Jenny Radcliffe Jenny Rabbit expert social engineer with decades of experience behind her a regular keynote speaker these people are here to be questioned they are here apply and go thank you guys ta -ra.